If you're out looking at your cornfields right now and you look at some of the leaves, you may see nutrient deficiencies. So we wanted to talk about what these different nutrient deficiencies look like, what you can do about them this year, and more importantly, what you can do about them in the future. Well, most of the time when you're looking at soils, you don't really see anything. You just see, oh, okay, I've got some soil out there and I don't really know if it's high in this or low in that before I do a test. When you actually see the plant and you see leaves that don't look quite right, you know something is going on out there and it's really important that you find out what those things are so you can correct them for the future. Okay, let's talk a little bit about nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium especially. With nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, they are all mobile nutrients in the plant. So in other words, if your plant is a little bit short on any of those nutrients, the plant will take nutrients from older growth in the plant and move it to the new growth in the plant. Well, the new growth on corn is at the top of the plant. Okay, so what happens is, let's say your plant's a little short on any of those nutrients, it'll rob it from the lower leaves to bring it to the upper leaves. So in other words, you're going to see these nutrient deficiencies show up on the lower leaves of the plant with N, P, and K. So what do they look like? Let's run through each of the three. With nitrogen, it's pretty common. Most people say, well, it's gonna be firing of those lower leaves. Yes, it is, but exactly where is that firing going to occur. This is the important thing you need to look for. With nitrogen, it's going to start out at the tip of the leaf. So the furthest thing away from the stalk, the tip of that leaf is going to fire, and then it's going to move in a V-shaped pattern down that midrib. So down the center of the leaf. That's what nitrogen deficiency is going to look like. Let's contrast that to potassium deficiency because this is where we see a lot of confusion out there really across the country. What we have with potassium deficiency, it's going to fire on those lower leaves also. So they're going to start turning brown, but they're going to start around the outside edge of the whole leaf and work its way in. So if you've got up the midrib is green, but out on the outside edges of that lower leaf, it's brown. Well, yellow, it's gonna be yellow first, then it's gonna to turn to brown once it dies. So you're looking for a yellowing on the leaves. Don't just think that your crop is suffering from lack of moisture. There's some people around the country that are really wet this year, but there are some that are very, very dry. So a lot of people are thinking that, oh, they see the bottom leaves firing, it's just lack of moisture, no way. A lot of times it's nitrogen deficiency or potassium deficiency, not a lack of moisture. Phosphorus deficiency is going to look just a little bit different on corn plants. Instead of seeing those leaves starting out yellow and turning brown, you're going to see leaves that start out looking purplish. So you're going to have either some purple flashes through the leaves, or in severe cases you're going to see really the whole lower part of the stalk and those lower leaves all turning purple, potentially the whole plant turning purple if you're very short in available phosphorus. Now the key word there is available because sometimes you may have plenty of phosphorus out there, just the soil is too cool and too wet to allow that phosphorus to become available. So it may or be Or the something... phosphorus could be bound up with something else in the soil. It could be tied up with calcium or tied up with aluminum or something in the soil. So it's just not available to plants. It's the same kind of thing with potassium. You might have lots of potassium in your soil, but you know what? We really don't care what's in the soil. I don't care how much nitrogen, how much phosphorus, how much potassium I have in the soil. You know what I care about? How much gets into the plant. And if you can actually see some of these nutrient deficiencies, you've already lost big time yield. And it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. When you see nutrient deficiencies on your plant, I would say in most cases you've already lost 25 to 50 percent of your maximum potential yield. Now that may still mean you could get 150 or maybe even 200 bushel corn, but I'm just saying you could have done a lot better if you wouldn't have let your plant get that far gone. Here's the big thing. You need to look at things on your farm and say, man, I'm putting out plenty of N, P, and K. I'm putting out more than what my crop is going to remove, even if I had a great crop. But what I may need to change is where I'm putting those fertilizers yeah. or in what form I'm putting them out. For example, let's say that you're farming in really dry country where you're getting, say, 10 inches of rain max per year. You probably need to be using liquid fertilizer rather than dry because you aren't going to get enough moisture to break those dry pellets down and get that fertilizer into your crop. If you're in a situation where you're getting higher moisture, but maybe you've got some tie up in the soil, so you're putting plenty of fertilizer out, but you aren't able to get it into the plant, you probably need to start looking at doing things just a little bit different. Maybe you move some more of that fertilizer into the furrow. Or or maybe you put it a little bit closer to the seed, you band it so it doesn't get tied up, or you start using products like Avail to stop that phosphorus fertilizer from being tied up, 
or starter fertilizers like Pro Germinator, where you've got fertilizer that has an organic protein around it so it doesn't get tied up in the soil. Those kind of things could all be good deals for you if you're seeing some of these nutrient deficiencies out in your fields. Okay, let's talk about some other nutrient deficiencies like sulfur and micronutrients. Well, sulfur and micronutrients, or most of the micronutrients, are non-mobile in the plant. So in other words, the plant starts growing, everything's good, but then all of a sudden it starts running short of these nutrients. It can't rob it from the lower leaves. So when the new growth comes out, that's where you see the discoloration. With sulfur, it's going to be on the upper leaves of the plant, same thing with most of the micronutrients, and you're going to have a yellowing there. So you just have to contrast that with the N, P, and K where you're going to see it on the lower leaves. Just do your best to try to determine what you've got out there, but if you are seeing a lot of these nutrients in your plant, I guess the biggest thing we wanted to stress to you is you've already lost yield, you've already lost a significant amount of yield, but I mean, don't let that get to you. You're going to farm for another, who knows, 10, 20, 30 years. Just try to make corrections going into next year, and in terms of this year, if your corn is this small, like the field we're in, you know, you could come out and do some side dressing. You could do some foliar feeding, something like that to supplement it a little this year, but you're never going to get back to maximum yield again if you've already seen a nutrient deficiency. One other thing I'll say too is don't play the blame game. If you've got something going on in your field, if you've got some upper leaves that don't look quite right, it could be one of those non-mobile nutrients in the plant that you're deficient. So don't say, oh man, it must have been that herbicide that got sprayed, or maybe my neighbor sprayed something that got into my field, or maybe I got a poor hybrid. But why don't you look at the things first that you can control and say, you know what, I wonder if I've got a nutrient issue out there. Yep, so do the best job you can to figure this out just look at it, but beyond that, we really strongly recommend you do some plant tissue analysis. We do that on our farm. We just take a few fields a year, we test those every week, and then we have a great idea what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong when it comes to our fertility program, and that's one of the ways we've really helped increase our yields over the years. Well, one other thing we've done to increase yields is get our weed control perfect out in the fields by controlling tough things like our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 